in some sort of paradoxical way, uh, Trump did us the favor of removing an illusion. Yeah. Okay. Um, our country was already divided, and he symbolized it. Okay. Uh, and I'm saying that our, and that's why just bringing him down, if that were possible, is not the answer. Hopefully, I mean, you know, I'd love to see it. But that's not, <laughs> that's not the answer to what's going on in our country. And then the challenge is, I think, to vigorously oppose the anti-democratic, and I'm a small d, uh, trends that are going on in our country, and to engage in depolarization work among our citizens, and to help our clients and our communities deal with the stress. You, you, those are all, th those are hard. But who, okay, I don't want to be chauvinistic about therapy, but who better to hold these contradictions than, than therapists? To be passionately concerned about what's going on in a country and compassionate to somebody who differs with me politically. And I'm saying we can't go back. We can't go back. The imaginary membrane between the public the political and the personal. It was always imaginary, and many people knew that. That's, that's, that's ruptured. We're in the democracy business because we're in the business of helping people have personal agency in their lives. And without personal agency, there's no democracy. There's no democracy. That's, that's what Donald Trump, that's what, he, that's what he taught me. I'd never made the connection between democracy and psychotherapy. We're in the democracy business. And we're in the social glue business. We're in the social glue business. And once this membrane is broken, then lots of other things can happen. So one of the projects that I'm, I'm working on now, again, this is like, boom. You've got to do some other things. So one of the projects I'm working on is a police and black men project, where, where and I started this with a, a dear African-American colleague that we worked with together. And we're meeting in his office a year or so ago, and he said he's getting outrage fatigue after the latest shooting of an unarmed police officer in our city. Outrage fatigue. And he and I had worked together on community projects for years, and he said, well, could we do something that uses what we know how to do? Could we do something? And so a year later, working it all the way up through the police department and so on, we are now six meetings into a project where a group, a small group of, of, of police officers, white and one black and black men from the community are meeting every other week, two hours for a year, for a year to develop relationships of trust. We are telling stories. We are telling stories. We're learning about the trauma that these black men have experienced and that the officers have experienced. And we are doing these two dials. We're dialing up our relationships, and we're dialing up intense conversations. And I have to tell you, the last meeting, the second dial went up a little too much, so we're going we're to do more relationship building. Okay. Uh, and it's, uh, but it's the kind of work now that, that I feel inspired to do. So if you want to continue this, the only thing Rich said wrong in his opener is that if you want to continue this in the diplomat room, that's going to be conversational. I'm not giving a speech there. That's going to be small groups. That's going to be most everybody else. Not, you, you have mostly heard from me as time I finish. As I finish, our world needs what therapists have to offer in the age of Trump and beyond. At a time when the social fabric of our nation is tearing apart, we're, we are connectors, glue makers. We understand the complexity of the human spirit we know that embracing differences is difficult but life enhancing. If we raise our sights and expand our vision of therapy and the role of the therapist in society, we can contribute to a flourishing democracy where people are valued for who they are, they can be shapers of their own lives and builders of a commonwealth. Thank you.